the former Blackpool and England footballer Jimmy Armfield, who's died at the age of 82. Jimmy, who was loved by later generations as a TV and radio pundit, had been living with cancer for 10 years. A one club man, Jimmy Armfield was a familiar figure in his hometown of Blackpool, a tireless charity worker, a school governor and for 30 years the organist at his local church. Let's go live to Richard Ascombe. He's spent the day at Bloomfield Road where uh, I guess the news is still sinking in, Rich. Yes, absolutely, Roger. He was one of the true greats of his generation. A terrific footballer was Jimmy Armfield, who captained his club and country. He was also a thoroughly decent person. You simply won't find anybody who has a bad word to say about Jimmy Armfield. As you can imagine, there have been lots of tributes that have been laid here beneath the statue that was erected in Jimmy's honour. And also a special tribute tonight. The famous Blackpool Tower is glowing tangerine this evening. The colours, of course of Blackpool, the club that he represented a record 627 times. From one icon to another, the famous tower turned tangerine tonight for a man who was known as Mr Blackpool and admired around the world. Gilmar's appearance goes to right back Jimmy Armfield. A Gilmar scramble and then Douglas gets the equaliser. And today Blackpool fans pay tribute to one of their own. When I was stood outside the main entrance years ago with my daughter, she had an autograph book and she was struggling to get autographs, but he came up and he was so good to her, you know, and he, he signed as many autographs as he could. You don't get them like that anymore. Um, international caps. He, 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 was, he was a stalwart, he, you know, you he, he can't fault him. One man, uh, one club, you know, all his career um, and totally respected. Jimmy played as a professional footballer from 1954 to 1971 and rose to the very top of the sport, captaining club and country. After the 1962 World Cup in Chile, he was regarded as the best right back in the world. But it was simple practice from an early age that was the key, as he explained in his final television interview just before his 82nd birthday last year. Nearly always had a little tennis ball in my pocket. Just push it along the street and take it, you know, and play with it. And that's how I learned to become a footballer. And the world of football has lined up to remember him. Sir Jeff Hurst was one of Jimmy's England teammates. Jimmy, a great part of our, our group, part of the World Cup, one of our great fullbacks, and one of the nicest guys you could have wished to meet. A super guy, uh, so real, real sad loss. Jimmy was also a successful manager at Bolton Wanderers and Leeds United, who he led to the final of the European Cup in 1975, before embarking on a career as a journalist and broadcaster, where he became a fixture of football coverage on the BBC for almost 40 years. How many others have lasted so long with such credibility at such a high level? I, I, that's Jim. But Jimmy, a quiet family man, certainly didn't blow his own trumpet and said this after being asked how he would like to be remembered. I've always tried to be loyal. You know, I've never left Blackpool in that respect. You know, it's, uh, I think that's what it is. It's, and I do think it's just the generation I was brought up in. Typical of a man who was Blackpool through and through and one of the great football figures of his generation. So many tributes from so many people tonight. I'll just read one of them to you, though, from Sir Bobby Charlton, teammate and friend, of course, of uh, Jimmy Armfield. Sir Bobby said, as an opponent, teammate and friend, he was without doubt one of the most honest and genuine gentlemen I have the good fortune to meet. Well, Richard, we've picked out the Blackpool Tower, a tower a couple of times in your report, and it strikes me that a bit like that, he was a towering character in that town. You, you met him a few times, what would your recollections and reflections of him be? Do you know what Roger, I, I would just echo what so many people have said, he was so genuine and warm. I can remember uh, chatting to him in his back garden about England and what really struck me on that occasion was just how fierce his passion still was for England. I think what sums him up though, I asked him this question myself as well, he he probably would have been the captain of the 1966 World Cup winning team, 
um, but for injury in the lead up to that competition. A lot of people, including me, asked him, you must have really regretted that. And his answer was simple. It was no. Wasn't it better that England won the World Cup? And I think that that selflessness really summed up Jimmy Armfield. Richard, thank you very much indeed. Richard Ascombe live in black. Well, we're joined now by the Professional Footballers Association Chief Executive, Gordon Taylor, who knew him very, very well. And um, very, very sad news because you were a very close friend of Jimmy's as well. I think Richard summed it up at the beginning of his report when he said you simply won't meet someone who had a bad word to say about him. No, and if he could say a good word about anybody, he would do rather than a bad word. He was a real gentleman. I know after people have died, people tend to sometimes exaggerate, but it, you couldn't exaggerate on Jimmy where wherever he went, even this last few sad few days in the hospice, it perked him up because he was such a sociable character. He would have time for everybody and had a call from so many people, but Harry Gregg was on today ex-United keeper of course who said Jimmy was the first to ring him and when I went over to see him at Christmas we had we found a picture from the big freeze up in 1963 when Bloomfield Road was all ice <laughs> and Jimmy's there on the pitch skating with Tony Waiters the goalkeeper and when you talk about Blackpool we had a good 80th birthday there and the highlight of the evening because Jimmy played the organ yeah. for the local church he was on Reginald Dixon's organ and he was playing it at the end, which was one of his big oh, ambitions, which it was just a privilege mm. and an honour to, to call him a friend. And you, you played against him, Gordon, of course, because your careers overlapped. Yeah. What was he like as a, as a competitor on the football pitch? Well, in fairness, it wasn't like playing against Norman Hunter or Tommy Smith. You knew you'd <laughs> have, it would be a, a fair game. <laughs> you knew you were quite safe and it was a, it was a fair old contest, but... He used to make me laugh because he would say when he was playing with Blackpool, he, he was one of the innovators of overlapping fullbacks coming down the wing. And the manager, Joe Smith, told him off and he said, uh, look, son, we've got Stanley Matthews to do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> he used to stay back there. So, but he was, he was with us for two decades. I know he's, as a mm. player, great. As a manager, great success. In the media, everybody loved yeah. his voice. But he would, he'd come in and, and with you'd the PFA, chat was yeah. with the PFA and he'd talk about... But he didn't live in the past. He was so concerned on his coaching and development and for the future of the well, game. I was going to ask, I mean, what he do you think his influence out. was on the game, but on future players as well, and managers? Because he had quite a role in, uh, in choosing the New yes, England he managers. Yes, he was... Uh, he, he used to consult, but at the end of the day, I know it was a big decision at the time because the FA were a bit worried about appointing Terry Venables and, and Jimmy went ahead and said, no, he's the right man. And of course, we did extremely well in, in the Euros. So mm -hmm. he was, a, to tell you the truth, he'd be a perfect mentor for everybody. He had his family were always first mm -hmm. and they had to be understanding because he was so much in demand. Mm -hmm. But when you hear about all the works he did with his charities and his church and he would be willing to go here there and everywhere and he loved nothing better actually than being with the bbc and watching football because it kept him up to date thank you for coming in and sharing your memories of him thank um, you it's a real pleasure because um, i feel we all should do him proud he's very special thank, thank you, you. Thank gordon you. thank you very much indeed. thank you uh, we'll have more of jimmy onfield towards the end of the program as well but next tonight